In my personal opinion, the three biggest things that you can do for your lubrication program are to get a hold of your contamination control program, improve your lubricant selection, and train your personnel. Now today we're gonna to be talking about lubricant selection. And one question we might wanna ask ourselves is, why is this so difficult to do? When talking about this, I often like to point to a survey that was done on reliabilityweb.com, where they asked about describing the importance of precision lubrication to a plant's reliability. Overwhelmingly, people replied that it was critically important. In fact, 81% of people said critically important. But when that same website asked the same people the kind of inverse of that question, have you achieved best practice lubrication? Overwhelmingly, the answer was no. So how is it that there's this huge disconnect? I think a lot of it comes down to problems with lubricant selection. And those problems come down to three different issues. One is lack of knowledge, two is lack of information, and three is incentive structures. When it comes to lack of knowledge, I think my views on this are pretty well documented. The issue that we generally have is that people in the reliability engineering field usually come from a kind of a mechanical background, whether they're mechanical engineers, diesel mechanics, fitters, turners, Everyone kind of has a mechanical background, and the challenge is that a lot of the knowledge we need to deal with lubricants and lubrication is chemistry. And there's very little domain overlap there. So if you're a mechanical engineer, you might have taken a handful of chemistry courses in high school or even first year university, but your knowledge is relatively limited. In a similar way, lubricant formulators tend to know a lot of chemistry and a little bit of mechanical engineering to get by. So really, I tend to play in the middle here. I try to be the translator between people who are of a mechanical engineering bent and people who work on the formulation side. But I'm someone with a mechanical background that has taught myself chemistry. There are formulators out there, for example, who understand the chemistry really well and have taught themselves mechanical engineering. So it's always trying to blend those two different disciplines and that's really challenging. There's not too many people that have that combined skill set. Now, we can solve some of this through personnel training. And my feelings on this are also well documented. I'm trying to put out as much information as I can into the public domain. And I'm also talking my own book a little bit here, because if you go to my website, lubrication.expert, I do have paid training courses available. If you're a member of this YouTube channel, I do also make some exclusive content available as well. Then, unfortunately, there's also the lack of information that's available. So... The oil companies here really don't make it easy on the consumer. And when I say consumer, I mean both people who own and maintain their own equipment. So if you own, let's say, for example, a vehicle or a performance vehicle or your own truck, it's very difficult to find detailed information that really breaks down what's in a product. So even if you want to inform yourself, that's quite a difficult thing to do. And that's one thing that I'm trying to advocate is to get oil companies to provide more information about what exactly is in these products to help differentiate themselves in the market. I think if there were an oil company that was willing to be much more transparent with what is in the products and exactly how they work, I personally think that they would do really well out of that with the enthusiast crowd. And so if you're an oil company that is interested in doing something like that, come and talk to me because I've got some ideas. But beyond that, um, I've gone through in a couple of videos how to extract as much information out of as possible out of websites, technical data sheets, as well as safety data sheets. So, so up here, I'll link to a couple of videos where I've gone through those in detail. Now, in order to do this, you need a bit of information about chemistry, a little bit about the lubricants industry, and a little bit about the application to navigate your way through that web of rather convoluted information and documentation. Finally, we get to incentive structures. And this is where I think we have a lot of room to improve. And this is an area where I think the oil industry has not done itself any favors. And I'm going to speak here mostly to industrial applications and when lubricants companies are trying to sell into major industrials. So whether that's something on the manufacturing side, mining, oil and gas, transport and logistics. The challenge that we have as an industry is that the purchasing of most lubricants has been taken over by procurement departments. Now, I don't want to disparage procurement professionals in any way. They're just doing their job but their KPIs are completely misaligned from reliability teams. Most of the time, in my experience at least, procurement organizations are brought in to drive low cost solutions. And the only way that they really know how to do that is to drive low dollar per liter outcomes. Now in many ways, we have trained them as a business to do this. If you think about the, the major brand names, Mobile, BP Castrol, Shell, Chevron, these are predominantly known 
as fuel companies. Now, they actually make the vast majority of their profits from their upstream businesses, but in the consumer-facing market, they're predominantly known as fuel companies. And when they go to procurement teams to sell fuel, they are doing so as commodity traders, effectively. I mean, people in the diesel industry will probably disagree with me, but diesel is diesel. It's a commodity. If I trade Chevron's diesel for Mobile's diesel for Shell's diesel, there's very, very little difference. We can play at the margins with like a value sell, but ultimately the procurement decision is going to be on a dollar per litre basis. If you, for example, are Rio Tinto, a, a giant mining company in Australia, it is absolutely in your best interest to drive the dollar per litre cost of that diesel as low as possible to like the fourth decimal place. And so the game that all the oil companies are playing is about who can align their logistics to ensure the lowest cost solution. Now, the challenge is those same companies now turn around and try and sell lubricants to those very same procurement departments who they've just trained to purchase on a dollar per litre basis. And now when we're selling lubricants, we're going for an entirely different value proposition. We're trying to sell quality. We're trying to sell reliability. We're trying to sell a partnership between the oil supplier and the reliability team. And that is a completely different way of thinking. Now, unfortunately, procurement departments are still in the business of doing things like reverse auctions. And unfortunately, procurement departments really don't know what kind of questions to ask and what information to put in their tenders. Now, I'm talking my own book a little bit here because one of the things that I do as a consultant is that I help big businesses to structure their tender processes for reliability outcomes, right? So I try and uh, make sure that everything that they put in the tender documents is going to ensure that they get high quality supply, they get clean oil supply, they get service that they can rely on, they get expertise, they get a partner who is going to help them with lubricant selection, a partner who's going to help them with things like root cause failure analysis, helping to identify cost savings. That's all the stuff that I try and build into the tenders of my clients. But unfortunately, there's been such an erosion of knowledge in the industry that people don't know what questions to ask. So I would say that that is the other major issue that we have when it comes to lubricant selection.